In March, April and May of 1815, Napoleon Bonaparte recently returned from exile, focuses his efforts on, on building and, and mobilising uh, a new army. He very rapidly builds up his army du Nord, uh, Army of the North, uh, and in mid-June, around the 15th of June, he sends this army marching north towards Brussels, partly also designed to split um, two allied armies in half and to effectively divide uh, the Allied army under Wellington from the Prussian army under Blücher. On the 16th of June, this French army encounters Allied and Prussian resistance for the first time, and they uh, encounter each other in the twin battles of Kachavra and Ligny. Now, in, in this campaign game, the French move first, and south of Kachavra, they race up the main road, trying to get quickly north to lock Allied forces in place. The idea being, if they can engage and lock those uh, few and isolated units in combat, they can use their superior numbers to surround them and eliminate the initially small Allied force before their reinforcements can arrive from the north and strengthen that position. Now, the command rules in the campaign game limit their ability to charge down the road. Uh, they can do so in the individual scenarios. So the French had to adopt a more cautious approach here, but they do manage to lock a single brigade in combat. Near Ligny in the east, the French try to cut that east-west road connecting the Allied and Prussian forces, just, again, to divide those two um, Allied armies. And a single cavalry unit uh, thus blocks the road. Now, I'm using the optional cavalry withdrawal rules here, which should keep that unit safe from harm, at least. This is my thinking at the time. The optional rule allows cavalry to be a little bit more adventurous in their scouting and supply line cutting, or in this case, severing or really slowing any possible movement between the Allied and Prussian forces. The French also make a small feint on their left flank and immediately move to strike at Ligny with cavalry forces guarding their right flank. Now, combat initially goes well for the French at Ligny. They force a DR on their left flank and a further DR in Ligny securing the southeast corner of the town already. The situation after combat near Cartabras sees uh, a single combat which forces Weimar's brigade to retreat. Now the French weigh up the pros and cons of advancing, but they figure that an advance will again lock Weimar's brigade in combat again, so they pursue um, and thus lock him in. In the first Allied movement turn, they rush south down the road towards Cartabra while moving their southernmost force to block their flanks and slow down the French. Around Ligny, the Prussians spring an early surprise on the roaming French cavalry by sending their own cavalry in, uh, along with a nearby infantry brigade. This prevents that cavalry from withdrawing. Uh, with the French retreat cut off, a DR result will destroy that reckless French cavalry. Elsewhere around Ligny, the, the Prussians move to shore up their western flank while making a bold move to try to retake the southeast corner of Ligny. Now, the Allies were forced into combat near uh, Prémont in the west, and an AR result forces that brigade back behind a stream into a, a better defensive position. Now, a DR result in the northwest of Ligny forces the elimination of that bold roaming French cavalry unit, but combat. Elsewhere is, is tough for the Prussians. They win a minor battle north of saint Armand, but they lose every other combat in the area. They're forced out of the northwest corner of saint Armand in the southwest uh, and are forced further out of Ligny in the centre. So it's a pretty bad start for Russians over in the east here. Now, turn two, uh, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, the second hour of the battle begins with a more focused French push into Ligny with an attempt... Uh, on the left to push the Prussian flanks in. There's no real pressure on saint Amand at this stage, and the hope is that the Prussians may just pull back from the area without the need for the French to, to fight them, fight their way through. In the west, near Cartabra, the French continue to move north to meet um, that Allied force, and they, they stretch their line east and west in the hope of both pinning the defenders down and hopefully uh, outflanking that, that Allied position. Again, combat goes pretty well for the French at Ligny, and they force the remaining Prussian defenders out of town. Uh, by advancing out after combat, they also ensure those Prussians remain locked and unable to withdraw and reform their lines. In the west of this position here, near saint Amand, things don't go as well for the French. They're forced back on their flanks, and they lose their toehold in uh, saint Amand. Further west, in Cartabra, the combat moves along 
uh, smoothly for the French. They destroy Allied cavalry on the western flank and force back a larger force on the eastern flank here. And in both cases, they advance after combat to maintain that pressure and lock in those Allied lines. And the Prussian response suggests that they still maintain high morale here. Near Katabrad in the west, they quickly move, the Allies, sorry, quickly move to form a strong line, while over near Linny, the Prussians move aggressively to retake part of Linny, the northwest corner of town. Um, they also strike at the French west flank near Linny. There are only a few small forces operating on that flank, but given it's effectively the, the kind of the centre of the two um, twin battlefields, Katabra and Linny, it feels like those small skirmishes could be important down the track. Uh, note here that De Erlen's corps in yellow moving, is moving up from the south. Now they could, they have some options here. They could easily detour northwest to wreak havoc on that Prussian flank. Uh, note also the increased pressure placed on the Prussians at Saint Armand. Now they risk being cut off if they don't pull out from that area very soon. It's hard to do so again because they're locked in combat. So at the start of the third turn, 4 p.m. on the 16th of June, the French. Uh, make a strong pincer move west of Linny, and this is designed to cut off the large Prussian corps attempting to hold saint Amand. Uh, de Erlon also decides to divert his force to this area, and they suddenly leave the road heading north towards Katarun and move east towards the sound of that, um, that gunfire in, in the east. Around Katarun, the French reorganise their lines and they put pressure on that eastern flank of the Allied line. Now, this French aggression pays off, and they see a wave of strong assaults, uh, successes played out along the line. They force the Prussian Allied line, sorry, they force the Allied line back near Katabra, and they expose some open area to the east of those Allied lines. Around Linny, the pincer pin move uh, succeeds perfectly. Most of the Prussian First Corps is now isolated in saint Amand, and the western Prussian flank look, suddenly looks very weak. The French also counterattack in Linny, and again they force the Prussians out of, um, out of the town. Now, if we look closely in the, the position around saint Armand, the French uh, Lagarde and Rome Hulot brigades have severed communication um, between uh, the, the Prussians and, and their corps there in saint Armand, unless a very strong counterattack can be made to reestablish communication, and more importantly, a retreat path, those, those units in and around saint Armand will be doomed. In the west, Allied reinforcements continue to rush into Katabra to show up the defensive line, and the situation here is... is relatively um, steady. Ney has, only has a command rating of one, which means he's limited in his advance. Now, with Wellington and the Prince of Orange commanding troops in this area, the key allied advantage here is their, their flexibility and the strength um, of their command. In short, they can put all their troops in command range and move them around, whereas Ney can only put about nine combat troops, uh, combat units in command in this area. Now, this, this is a key consideration in deciding to send to Erdogan's corps east. Uh, his corps can link up with Napoleon and be under Napoleon's command and actually do something. Um, if he went north to Katabra, he'd be competing with Ray's Green Corps for activations. Um, and he'll have a strong impact uh, near Lini. Now in the east, um, as much as is practical, the Prussians pull back and reform a line north of, of Lini and saint Amand. Uh, they decide not to counterattack in force. They would need some very good results to save those trapped units. And if they failed, they risked losing even more of their army. Uh, Thielman finally springs his corps, the Orange Corps, into action, and they shift west to form a line north of Lini. Uh, Thielman's entire corps has been covering that eastern flank against some some weak French cavalry. It's about time they got involved and improved their worth. Um, now, the reformed line isn't great, it's not very strong, uh, and Blücher basically prays for the night to come so they can fall back and reorganise. Uh, the Prussians also moved to uh, occupy part of that gap between Katabra and Lini, in effect, to ensure Durland's arrival is, is checked to some degree that Durland can't just push through that, that space. Now, some minor fighting takes place near Katabra, and AR results force the Allies back on both flanks. Near Linny, the Prussians win one combat north of saint Amand, but there's little else they can do, and the isolated units are eliminated due to uh, lack of retreat. So in turn 4, 5pm, uh, near Katabra, the French continue to harass the Allied flank, leaving their centre untouched. Uh, nearby, De Erlon's corps moves to kind of wedge themselves between the two engagements of Katabra and Linny, and the prospect of the two battles merging to one uh, large combined combat is looking increasingly likely. 
near Linny, the French move in to finish off that Prussian first corps, the light blue corps, and Zethen finds himself trapped as well. Now, in general, the French forces begin a sort of westward shift to take advantage of the weakness presented by the first corps, demise, the Prussian first corps' demise, and they aim to link up with Erlon for a push into that sort of gap there between the Allied and the Prussian um, forces. After combat, the French have a, a commanding position on the eastern flank of Cartabra and on the western flank of Ligny. Now, Zethan cannot escape that trap, and he falls in combat. Now, more Allied reinforcements arrive in Cartabra, and Ney needs to be careful now. Without de Erlon supporting him, the French possession is looking relatively weak compared to the Allies, and for the first time it looks like the Allies, Allied force here under Wellington and Prince of Orange may actually threaten the French western flank. Uh, slightly east of Cartabra, the Allies... Uh, have to fall back to protect their flank there. But nearby, towards uh, Assart, Dams, Avelines, they uh, see dust approach arising as, as the first troops arrive in the area from the extended Prussian or right uh, western flank. So those Prussians have extended out from north, uh, north from Lini to guard that gap, uh, protect the Allied eastern flank, and delay de Erlon. Now they're out of command, but they can slow any attempted pr uh, French advance. Around Linny, despite the loss of the First Corps, Prussian blood is, is still up. Um, the reigning troops are still eager for battle, and a counterattack on the western, their western flank threatens to eliminate a French brigade, while southern movement along the line suggests the Prussians are not quite ready to give up and pull back from this position yet. A minor battle near Cartabra forces the French back, and the Allies choose not to advance. Both sides now stand a slight distance apart here, with no direct engagement taking place anywhere along the line. They're just kind of staring, standing, staring at each other. Uh, west of Linny, the Prussian counterattack eliminates a French brigade. Now, it's, a, it's a minor victory, but it really buoys Prussian spirits. Closer to Linny, the, the Prussians are generally forced back with some unfortunate AR results, but they do force an exchange with the French, which they're happy to take at this stage. So after about four hours of fighting, the situation remains rather static near Cartabra, but an Allied counteroffensive looks looks possible. Slight to the east, Erlon is poised to strike uh, in either direction. He could head north and drive the Allied eastern flank back, or he could head northeast and drive a wedge between the Allied and Prussian forces. Or the more likely outcome is he'll continue to head east, link up with the main French force to strike on that, that western flank of the Prussian force and roll up the Prussian, Prussians from, from west to east. The Allies are pretty content with their defence of Cartabra, but the loss of that Prussian First Corps, including their officer, has been devastating to the Prussians around Linny. It's difficult to uh, for them to pull back from this position, and they, they basically beg for the sun to go down to allow them to pull back and reform. Every time the Prussians hit at the French, the French just hit back harder with more infantry, cavalry, artillery, stronger units... And already Blucher is thinking about you know, pulling back um, to the north. Uh, one thing that's evident from this campaign game is that the individual battle scenarios really don't do historical justice to the situation in this game. It feels like an entirely different game. The command rules, uh, while present in a short single column within the rule book, add a huge dimension to the game and the considerations you make. Unlike the scenarios, you can't just rush around trying to eliminate the enemy. After four turns of the campaign game, combined casualties from both uh, Cartabra and Linny are only a small fraction of what they were for the individual battles. The French have only lost five brigades thus far, and they're likely to reorganise, return and reduce strength their units in coming turns. And the loss of the Prussian First Corps has had the biggest impact thus far, and will likely have an ongoing impact. De Erlon's movement between the two battles has also changed the situation, and again emphasise that grand scale of the campaign. This is looking less like the dual battles of Cartabra and Linny, more like the, the combined battle of Cartabra and Linny. Now, what happens in one battle affects what happens in the other. And that extension of the, the Prussian western flank towards Cartabra has weakened the defence around Linny, but protected that gap between the two armies and um, protected both flanks.